this video, we're going to go over the AC generator. AC stands for alternating current. And the place that we have generators is in our power stations, right? Because we know in power stations, what happens is we're going to burn our fossil fuels. Our fossil fuels, that we burn that fossil fuels to heat up our water. Our water burn, turns to steam. Our steam turns a turbine. And that turbine then causes that motion, right? We've got now kinetic energy. And that motion then causes this wire. So that turbine causes this wire to spin. So what we've got now is we're going to have a spinning wire. And inside the generator then, we've got that spinning wire moving through our permanent magnetic field. And we know any time that we've got a moving wire inside a permanent magnetic field, we know from our earlier videos there that we're going to get an EMF induced because of Faraday's law. The EMF induced is directly proportional to that rate of change of our magnetic flux linkage. So again, what we're saying, remember, that stands for B times A. What we're saying is we're looking at how many field lines are cutting through that area of wire. Okay, so if we're getting a change in the number of magnetic field lines passing through the wire, we're going to get an EMF in just. So because we're constantly rotating that wire, we're constantly changing the number of field lines cutting that wire, and that's why we're going to get our EMF in just. So what we're going to look at here is let's imagine this coil of wire, we're just going to model it here as like our plane. So there's our plane. And if we look at our normal, our normal is perpendicular to that plane of our coil. And we always represent that we know that n times phi is equal to b a n cosine of theta. So what we're saying is our magnetic flux linkage is always going to be a maximum when that value of theta is going to be zero. So what we're saying is when our value is theta is zero, when we have that plane of the coil perpendicular to your magnetic field lines, or we have our normal parallel to our field lines, that's when we're going to get our magnetic flux to be a maximum. So again, what we're saying is when our normal is parallel to the field lines, that's when our magnetic flux is a maximum. So let's say we start, so let's say we're going to start with theta being zero. We're going to start with our normal parallel to our field lines or our plane of our coil perpendicular to field lines. We know then that this is going to end up being a maximum, right? It's going to be a maximum at a value of B times A times N, a value of whatever the area of our coil is, however number of turns the coil is, and B is just measuring Tesla's, what is the strength of that magnetic flux density? We know then over time as you start to rotate this coil, so our coil member is going to be spinning, so let's imagine we start to rotate that coil, we can see that the angle is changing over time, there'll be a different number of field lines cutting through it. And we know once we get to the point, so let's say we rotate in this direction, once we get to the point where our plane of our coil is parallel field lines or the normal is perpendicular, that's when that magnetic flux then is going to be a minimum. So it's going to be a minimum when we hit that angle there, we get through 90 degrees. And then we rotate it again, so let's say we keep rotating it, I rotate it again, and what's going to happen now is it's basically just going to end up being upside down, and again, our normal ends up being parallel to our field lines. That's going to be a maximum again, but because it's in the opposite direction, it's going to be a maximum in that opposite direction. So we can see what happens here is we're going to get that curve over time. We're going to get a change in our magnetic flux linkage over time. So what we might get asked then is how do you draw an EMF graph for this? How do we so show that EMF and just changes over time? And I know that EMF is equal to the rate of change of that magnetic flux linkage. So what we're looking at here is the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. The EMF here is going to be the gradient of these lines. So if I look at the gradient here, the gradient here is technically zero, so EMF starts at zero. Here, the gradient is going to be in that maximum. That gradient there is going to be negative. So that gradient there is negative. We know that due to Lenz's law, we know that EMF in just is equal to the negative, the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage, right? It poses the change that causes it. We did that previous video. So if I looked at my gradient here at that point, so again, if we took a gradient of that line, the change in y over change in x, I can see that's a negative. So you might think it'd be a negative EMF. But because it opposes the change of causes it, it's actually going to be a positive EMF. So our EMF graph just takes the opposite shape. So again, at this point here, it's going to be a positive, a maximum. At here, the gradient is zero, so our EMF is going to be zero. And at here, we can see that gradient is positive, but again, it's going to be maximum positive. But because it's opposed the change of causes it, it's actually a negative value at that point. And again, here, my gradient is zero. So we can see what happens then is it actually follows our sine curve. 
So what we can see is in our generator, as that coil is spinning, what happens, the EMF in just changes over time. And that's why then we call it alternating current because it's a complete circuit that EMF in just is gonna give us an alternating current that goes from the positive to those negative values. And the only other way this might get asked is let's say they asked you about a dynamo. So a dynamo, right, it looks like it begins with D, so that one uses DC current. So all it does is instead of having these slip rings, what it does is it has a split ring commuter. So what that does is every half turn, it just switches the poles. So every half turn just switches the direction. So instead of having an EMF that goes from positive to negative, because it switches at every half term, all of these negative values will stay positive. So for a dynamo, what it does is it just keeps all of the negative values positive. So we just get a direct current coming out instead of an alternating current that's going from our positive to our negative values. So again, we use this in our power stations because again, we've got a spinning wire free of magnet. And anytime we know we've got a spinning wire free of magnet, we're changing the number of magnetic field lines that are passing through the area of coil. And the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage is proportional, directly proportional to the EMF in just.